space. It is often said to be the final frontier, the last thing to be explored and conquered. Many people learn early on in their education about things such as the solar system and constellations, or what we like to call parts of the field of astronomy. Now, if I asked you what the difference between astronomy and astrology is, perhaps you might not be able to tell me. Well, it's okay. To put it simply, astronomy is the scientific study of space, whereas astrology is observing the movement of heavenly bodies and using the data to try and predict the future. But if these definitions are so clearly separable, why is it that sometimes we can't keep them straight? You see, the thing is, from as early on as 3000 BC up until the 18th century, they were often regarded as different ways of saying the same thing, like the words flammable and inflammable, which both mean something easily set on fire. However, due to new findings in the field, especially the fact that we orbit the sun instead of the sun orbiting us, so many holes existed in astrology by the 18th century that the two studies were permanently separated and astrology was classified as a pseudoscience, or fake science. Ever since then, astronomy and astrology are less like the words flammable and inflammable and more like the words combustible and incombustible. You see, although they are extremely similar, combustible means something easily set on fire, whereas incombustible means something is flameproof. Because English makes sense, that's why. Anyway. I thought it was a bit strange that astrology was so quickly disregarded despite its roots in 3000 BC in ancient Mesopotamia, so I decided to do a little digging. See, first I wanted to see which of the 12 astrological signs I would be categorized into according to personality quizzes, and then compare it to whether or not that would be the one I'm supposed to be in. So I went to perhaps the most infamous place for personality quizzes on the entire internet. Oh yeah. BuzzFeed. I went to BuzzFeed for my quizzes. Anyway, I ended up taking two quizzes with interesting results. See, the first quiz I took failed to categorize me properly, but fortunately you can see what other people got on the quiz and what they rated it. The results? Absolutely horrendous. A measly 7%. 7% of approximately a thousand people actually got the sign that they're supposed to belong to. But, you know, one quiz. I wasn't quite ready to give up, so I took another BuzzFeed quiz. And this one? Yeah, wasn't much better. This time, about 3,000 people had taken the quiz, and it was only accurate with about 12%. And it still failed to categorize me properly as well. So I thought that perhaps it was because BuzzFeed quizzes were written by amateurs with no real expertise in this field. So I decided I'd try something with arguably more science behind it. I took one last quiz from a different site called Quiblo. And although the site is not much more reputable than that of BuzzFeed, at least the author of this quiz claimed to be someone who was an astrology student, so I decided to go with that one. I finished up the quiz and, uh, well, to my surprise, it guessed correctly. However, the quiz uh, did cheat a bit, as it had guessed three different signs at the end instead of one. And even using that method, the quiz only had a success rate of about 60%. Well, quite certain I wasn't going to be getting any farther with just quiz research. I decided to find what I could f from someone more professional. And according to a page I found on Medical Daily, Mark Hamilton, a social scientist in the communication department at University of Connecticut, published a study in the Comprehensive Psychology Journal about astrology. The study stated that 29% of Americans are firm believers in using astrology to predict the future, which I found surprising given that the quizzes weren't doing so hot. Hamilton also randomly selected a set of 300 celebrities from a wide spectrum of fields, including politics, science, public service, literature, the liberal arts, and sports. And when he compared all of them together, a pattern started to emerge. See, most of the celebrities had birthdays somewhere between December and early March, which covers approximately three astrological signs, just like the guesses dashed out by the Quiblo quiz. Medical Daily also mentioned another study published in the Journal of Social Sciences in 2013 had also examined astrological trends in celebrities. It initially started with 100 celebrities, but then grew to 200, 
And then finally it ended up at 300 just like the first study. This time, instead of focusing on different fields, however, the study focused on making sure it covered celebrities from different histories and backgrounds. And the second study found that most celebrities were considered to be of the Aquarius sign, which falls between January 21st and February 18th, in case you don't know. And this coincides with the study conducted by Mark Hamilton, suggesting that your chances of becoming a famous celebrity might very well be better if you are born in a magic three-month period, and especially if you are born in Aquarius. But, you know, is this all coincidence, or is it affected by the Great Cosmos? Stats are all fine and dandy, but they don't necessarily prove that we are being controlled by the universe or destiny. I needed to change my approach one last time, and we're better to look than the beginning. If we work under the assumption that the universe was created by the Big Bang, all matter that has ever existed was at one point part of the infinite void of space and traveled extreme distances to eventually coalesce into our solar system and evolve into the modern life as we know it. So with that in mind, is it too much of a reach to say that because we are made of cosmic matter that we may share personality traits with people born around the same time as us because we all herald from the same chunk of star or nebula? Yes. Absolutely. That is way too far of a reach. If we follow that line of logic, we'd have to bet on the odds that all of us are separated into, into approximately 12 different personality types because we came from 12 distinctly different areas of space and ended up in the same planetary system on the same planet, and then those 12 tropes became life forms that eventually evolved into humans, not to mention the fact that your personality traits would most likely be hereditary rather than based in part on what of the Earth's orbit around the sun that you came into the world <sighs> if I were a gambling man I would not be taking those odds <sighs> but for research's sake I had to fall down that stupid crazy rabbit hole and after a lot a lot of nature versus nurture research I came across an article by Dr. Michael W. Krauss from 2013 on the website Psychology Today. In that article I came across the evidence that would close the argument for me. You see it turns out we haven't done the research yet! Are you kidding me? Ah, uh, Dr. Krauss stated that the US has spent billions, literally billions of dollars on genetic research, and nobody stopped and said, hey, we should see if personalities are genetic. <sighs> what are we spending our money on, if not seemingly obviously questions like that? I mean, seriously, does this mean I can get mutant powers spliced into my DNA? Is, is that what we've been doing? No? Fine. Well, needless to say, I was a bit disappointed to hit this dead end after so much work. However, even without the research to back it up, I still think the odds on the previously mentioned cosmic formulation gamble are unlikely enough that even if personality is hereditary, that it is not caused by how we were formed. But then again, what are the odds of humans forming from the Big Bang Theory in the way we did? What were the odds that our solar system would line up just right so that life period could exist in it? What are the odds of getting Delta Royal Flush? Well, we can actually calculate that last one. It's 1 in 649,740 in case you're curious. But come on, that's just getting a certain combination of five playing cards. The odds of that have got to be astronomically better than that of anything else I just mentioned. That being said, I think we can all learn a little something from my friend Lloyd Christmas. What are my chances? Not good. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! You know, he's right. 
no matter how ludicrously unlikely something might be, there's still that one teeny tiny itsy bitsy absurdly tiny chance that it happens. So, I guess, can we absolutely rule out that theory? Can we definitely say that we are not affected by the movement of our planetary bodies? No, 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 we, we, we cannot. But then again, I guess we also can't prove that we are affected by them either. So, I guess, in the end, it's really up to you and what you want to believe.